to uh, just go over two items that I would like particularly new entrants to the stock market to ponder just a bit before they try and do 30 or 40 trades a day in order to profit with, from what looks like an, a very uh, easy game. So I would like to uh, go to slide L1. So put that up. And these, I, on March 31st, I ran off a list of the 20 largest companies in the world by stock market value. Those names, good many of which will be familiar to you, but they were led by Apple at slightly over two trillion. And uh, it went down to the number 20th was worth 330 odd billion. But those are the 20 largest companies in the world by market value on March 31st. Now, if I had a little, I was hoping I could get a little uh, quiz machine so I could have everybody to weigh in on this answer and we could flash it up a little later, but it was technically impossible for, but what I would like you to do is look at that list. Um, yeah. Starts off with Apple, Saudi Aramco is a pretty kind of a specialized country, a, a company. Of, it's, it's, I don't know whether it's 95% owned by the government or what, but, but it's it's essentially a country that's for sale there. Uh, you know, it's got all the, it's not working very well or something of the sort. You know, in the whole world of the six top companies in value, five of them are in the United States. And if you think about it, you know, we talked a little about this last year, but in 1790, we had one half of 1% of the world's population. And a little less, we had 4 million people, 3.9 million people. 600,000 of them were slaves. Ireland had more people than the United States had. Russia had five times as many people as the U.S. And Ukraine had twice as many people as the United States. So here we were. But what, what did we have? We had a map for the future, an aspirational map, that uh, somehow now only 200 and well, after the Constitution, 232 years uh, later, leaves us with five of the top six companies in the world. You know, it's not an accident. And it's not because we were way smarter, and, uh, way stronger, you know, anything of the sort. We had good soil, a decent climate. But so some of those other countries I named, uh, and uh, the system has worked unbelievably well. Just imagine thinking of five of the top six companies in the world ending up with a country that started with a half of 1% of the population just a few hundred years ago. But what I would like you to do is look at that list for a minute or two, if you want to, and, and then make an estimate, make your own guess, how many of those companies are going to be on the list 30 years from now? There they are, these powerhouses. And how many would you guess are going to be on the list? Well, you know, it's not going to be all 20. It may not even be all 20 today or tomorrow. <laughs> this was March 31st. What would you guess? And think about that yourself. Would you put on five, eight? Well, whatever it would be, I would now invite you to look at slide two or L2, which goes back a little more than 30 years. And look at the top 20 from 1989. And if you look at the top 20 from 1989, there's two things that we should grab your interest, at least two. None of the 20 from 30 years ago are on the present list. None, zero. There were then six U.S. companies on the list, and their names are familiar to you. But, uh, we have uh, General Electric, we have Exxon, we have IBM Corp. I mean, these are, they're still around. Uh, Merck is down there at number None made it to the list 30 years later or zero. And I would guess that very few of you, when I asked you to play the quiz a little, a few minutes ago would have put down zero. And I don't think it will be zero. But it is a reminder of what extraordinary things can happen. Things that seem obvious to you. Japan had, had this wonderful bull market for a very long time, so you had a number of Japanese companies on the list. Today there, there are none. And uh, the United States has a six, now we have 13. But they are the same six. I would invite you to think about one other thing as you look at this list. 1989 was not the dark ages. I mean, we weren't just discovering capitalism or anything else. People thought they knew a lot about the stock market and the efficient market theory was in, and they were all, it was not a backward time. And if you look, the top company at that time had a market value of 100 billion, 104 billion. 
So the largest company in the world, Tidal, in just a shade over 30 years, has gone from 100 billion to 2 trillion. At the bottom, the number 20 has gone from 34 billion to something a little over 10 times that. Well, that tells you something about what's happened with equality, which is a hot subject in, in, in this country. It tells you a little bit about inflation, but this was not a highly inflationary period as a whole. But it tells you that capitalism has worked incredibly well, especially for the capitalists. And uh, it's a pretty astounding number. Do you think do you, do you think it could be repeated now that, that 30 years from now that you could take two trillion for Apple, <laughs> multiply any company and come up with 30 times that for the leader? You know, it, it seems impossible and maybe it is impossible, but I just, we were just as sure of ourselves as investors at Wall Street was in 1989 as we are today, but the world can change in very, very dramatic ways. And I'll just give you one other example you might ponder. This is, I'm going to start feeling too sure of yourself. That my, one thing it shows, incidentally, is that it's a great argument for index funds is that, uh, you know, it, the main thing to do was to be aboard the ship, you know, a ship. You know, they were all going to a, a better promised land. You used to know which one was the one they'd necessarily get on. But, but you couldn't help but do well if you just had a diversified group of equities. U.S. equities would be my preference, but to hold over a 30-year uh, period. But if you thought you knew a lot about which ones to pick or the person that you had hiring, you were paying a lot of money to, had all these ideas, and uh, they could tell you their best ideas in 1989 did not necessarily do that well, although overall equities were absolutely the place to be. Secondly, people get enormously attracted to various industries. I mean, I think if you, I think if you know if a company says it's in the XYZ industry and that's a popular one, you can you can sell IPOs, you can you can sell SPACs, you can people that disregard sales numbers, earnings numbers. It just you know it's the place to be. So Berkshire Hathaway, where was the place to be in? 1903 when my uh, my dad was born in 1903 but that wasn't really that big of news but it wasn't big news that actually Henry Ford was starting the Ford Motor Company it failed a couple of times before but he was about to change the world I mean the, the auto when you think about everything we've got a great auto insurance company but if there weren't any autos we wouldn't have Geico uh, but it, it transformed the country and Henry Ford brought in the five dollar daily wage and that was a huge thing assembly lines I mean, everything autos came along so let's just assume that you had seen a quick glance back in 1903 of all the interstate highways 290 million bike vehicles on the road in the united states you know everything about it said well this is pretty easy it's going to be cars it's going to be autos well we own a company called marmon we bought it from the pritzker family some years ago pritzkers had built this business from many, many, many companies that they'd acquired, and the name of their company was Marmon, and uh, I don't know exactly why Jay and Bob decided to name it Marmon, but they did own a company called Marmon, and the Marmon company is uh, getting slightly enemy on the slides again, but that's okay. We called it, it was, they owned this company Marmon, which in 1911, had been a uh, the company whose car won the first Indianapolis 500. Maybe that's why they called it Marmon. They were proud of the fact that the company in 1911 named the won the first Indianapolis 500. It also was the company that invented the rearview mirror. I'm not sure whether that was a big contribution to society, and certainly around your household. 